Hello and welcome to the first episode of Rule the Waves 2, which will be starting as a new game on the channel, which will happen and be alternating every other day. Uh, Rule the Waves 2 is a ship design and naval warfare combat simulator from the periods of 1900 to 1955. Um, it's pretty expansive and very detail orientated. Uh, it's a lot like Aurora in many aspects. We're going to be playing as Japan in this game. Uh, so Japan... Uh, compared to any other uh, faction which we voted on. Uh, Japan got the most votes at 12 votes, while the US got 8, and I believe Britain at the end had about 8 votes as well. Uh, interestingly, um, there was a bit of a race between these two, but Japan did finally win out. Now, Japan at this period, let's have a look at what they're like. They're not the naval superpower we think of in the 1930s, and that they... You know, they don't have the biggest carrier fleet. Carriers don't even exist yet. We don't have fighters. We don't have all that. It's the age of the pre-dreadnought and the large gunboats. So, uh, Japan has a game naval budget of 20,000, but we're going to be playing on the historical naval budget of 10,000. If we compare this to the Royal Navy, they have a historical naval budget of 40,000. Um, to give you some reference, a battleship, a pre-dreadnought battleship, may cost you 2,000 a month. Okay, and that budget is um, is every month. You're given that budget every month. That's about millions. Uh, let's say 40 million uh, would probably be correct. Or 40,000 million. I forget the exact numbers, but I think it's 40 million. Um, one of the big part problems with Japan, though, early on, obviously, is shipbuilding. If we compare our dock size, so that's how big of a vessel, how big of vessels you can build with your own shipyards. You can build them in other Navy shipyards, and we'll be seeing that shortly. So, uh, the UK and Germany, for example, or France, have about 16 to 14,000 ton naval shipyards. Um, we get the feature, Surprise Attack, which we'll be going over when that happens. It's really cool. No oil. And then we get a bunch of advantages or bonus technologies. So, we get light forces, torpedo warfare, naval aviation, and shipboard aircraft operation. So, it means that we're good at carriers. Once we get there, so that's going to take you know, 20 or 15 years. And we're also um, good with torpedoes and light forces. Uh, so that will give us some bonuses there. And then we have bonus tech. So we have double torpedo mounts, diving shells, oxygen fuel torpedoes, and lengthened torpedoes. And then we get all our naval guns from 10 to 2 inch. If we compare that, the UK has access to 13 inch naval guns at the start of the game. We only have 10 inch. Uh, the US has 12 inch guns at the start of the game. So we're definitely behind on the shipbuilding, we're behind on the gun sizes, um, and one of our main adversaries does have some of those advantages and a bigger budget on us, but we'll be getting to that in a second. Anyway, let's get into the game, so we're going to go for Japan. We're going to do a large fleet size, we're going to go for historical resources, and I'm not going to put anything else on. I don't want to manually build the legacy fleet because I want to get into the game and I want to showcase um you know designs and, and and ships i'm not fully clued in exact on the designs and stuff but i i have enough to play the game i know kind of how to do that so we're gonna go for slot four and we're gonna start up our rule the waves game here here we go so let's start out I'm going to kind of give an overview of things. Again, I'm not fully experienced, and I'm sure there's going to be much more people experienced in the comments below um, that know what they're talking about. But we're going to go from right to left. So over here, we have the tension level. When the tension hits this line, we go to war with the other nation. Okay? We can put intel effort, and that will give us more events associated with that nation, and will allow us to go to war or not go to war, for example. Um, so in this case... I want to put stuff into the US, Russia, and Germany. Because at this time period, Germany holds some uh, territories in the uh, Pacific, as well as China. So we definitely want to look at taking those if we can. We then have messages, which is things that happen. So as we can see here, uh, we have the US, Russia, all these building battleships. Um, and we're building a battleship. We're actually building out of uh, Britain's yards, which we'll get to in a moment. We then have intel reports, which we don't, you know, we uh, haven't got anything yet. And then we have the alam al almanac. God, I don't know how to pronounce it. Almanac. Almanac is the correct pronunciation, my bad. 
So this is how we keep up with what ev everyone's building. So in this case, we have two pre-dreadnoughts currently in service, the Fuso and the Asahi. And we have a battleship building, which is of the Ishima class, which we will have a look at in a moment. Germany has four battleships or pre-dreadnoughts. Uh, Great Britain has eight pre-dreadnoughts and they're building another four. Uh, France has three and they're building one more. Russia has five, so we're going to want to compete there because Russia and Germany are going to be our two adversaries early on. And then USA has nine, but they're building four more with Italy. Not really going to be important in this game for us. We then have heavy cruisers. Um, so these, if you don't know what heavy cruiser is, heavy cruiser is, and these aren't heavy cruisers, my bad. These are armored cruisers. They will become heavy cruisers, but in this period, they're armored cruisers. They're basically... Light battleships is is a way I'll put it. They're faster than battleships, but they're less heavily guns. But they have the armor kind of uh, the armored capability. They're the pre-battle cruiser essentially. Um, so we're obviously quite outmatching a lot of areas here with that. We don't have light cruisers. Light cruisers in this game uh, are pretty small. Uh, they're basically buffed up destroyers. They have torpedoes. Um, and they're able to fight destroyers. They're your anti-destroyer force, really. Um, but most importantly, they're useful for going to ensure that your colonies are safe. And we'll get to that in a moment as well. Destroyers? Uh, destroyers are not what we think of in modern day. Uh, if you don't know, destroyers at this time period are basically torpedo boats. They're 400, 500 ton. Very small. Very cheap. With a few torpedo launchers. And we're going to have some uh, cheekiness with them uh, in the future. And then there's submarines and naval aircraft. We don't have either of those yet. They'll be developed as the game continues. We can save and do the turn order here. Turns are in a month. So we're currently in January of 1900. Let's go through our vessels and the map. So uh, this is the map, as you can see. Um, we are located, obviously, here. We have some possessions in Southeast Asia. We are in Northeast Asia as our home port. We've got Port Arthur over here with the Russians. We've got Vladivostok, uh, which is located actually here, but this is the region. And then Sekilan, as well as Kamchika, which is located here. So a lot of territories we can take from Russia. And then we also have Northeast Asia. Um, we have a bunch of possessions over here. We have Taiwan, uh, or Formosa it's called in this. And Germany and a bunch of other territories. That's really all we need to know about. The other thing you need to know about is um, not oil yet, because we can't even use oil, but invasion ranges. So we can invade Sakilan, and we can invade from, uh, I believe it's ports. Yeah, ports, or they're, they're in our in owned regions. Um, so in this case, we could invade Hong Kong, we could invade uh, Sakilan, but we couldn't invade Port Arthur. Um, now, that sounds a bit strange, like, couldn't, you know, it's 1900, you should be able to sail ships up and, and land ships. Yes, but it's it's more of a game balancing act. So that's what you need to know. There's a few other buttons here, but we're going to go over to ships and service first. So let's have a look at our ships. Uh, we're eight minutes in, and it's time to actually look at our ships. So we have the Fuso class. Uh, I think the Fuso class was the actual class, but it this is not what it was in real life. So, we have the Japanese battleship, the Fuso, built in Britain, because it's got 12-inch guns, and we can't build 12-inch guns. Four 12-inch guns, 12 6-inch guns, and 12 3-inch guns. So, uh, keep in mind that each turret, like main gun, has two guns, right? You have two cannons, and then the turret, so four uh, cannons total for two turrets. Um, these are pre-dreadnoughts. So, because they're pre-dreadnoughts, they can only have a certain number of main guns. So, we couldn't, for example, have, like, five centerline turrets with 15-inch guns or whatever, because that just hasn't... That's not a thing yet. You can't do that. Um, so, instead, we have 12 6-inch, 12 3-inch. And so, uh, the philosophy at this time was have a bunch of guns um, uh, for different ranges and have a bunch of armor and just be big and 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 just dominate the season that way it has some issues 18 knot speed very slow uh destroyers of this period are going to get up to 23 24 knots something like that and they're going to get faster and faster nine inch belt armor is okay two inch deck i wouldn't build anything with lower than two inch deck so 
this is basically the thickness of the deck. So if a, if if a fa if a, an explosion on the deck starts, if a shell hits the deck, if uh, you know a fire starts, that's the armor that's going to melt there. We then have the belt, and that's the amidships belt. So that'll be covering basically this. It'll be covering all of that. Um, and that's going to be our main belt for protection. And then you have the extended belt, which is over here. We don't have that here. The turret armor, obviously very important because the ammo is probably located in the turret. Battery, uh, that'll be for our other guns, their armor. And then we have the conning tower, which is over here. It's basically our superstructure. I think it's our superstructure. Again, I'm not too familiar with that. Also, as any battleship of the day currently, we have torpedo tubes. Um, and yeah, this is a pretty okay battleship. Nothing too great. And then we have a heavy cruiser. We have the Asama. Four nine-inch guns, uh, but it goes 20 knots. So as you know, as I say, it's only a thousand tons less than our battleships, but it's a lot faster. And it's got guns that are more suitable for dealing with um, dealing with destroyers or dealing with light cruisers. So this is your light cruiser killer, really. Five-inch belt, two-inch deck. We then have a light cruiser, Naniwa, very small armament, uh, even really bad deck. I would not want to keep building this. This is not a vessel that I would keep building. That's going to go on foreign station somewhere. Um, then we have our destroyers. We have two types. We have the Aki Aki Akikaze, Akikaze, very fast, 27 knots, uh, torpedo tubes. That's really all you want. The only thing you want from a destroyer is torpedoes <laughs> uh the difference here is the short range so they can't move after war start um basically but it gives them some extra tonnage so, so they can be smaller but still have similar capabilities then we have the minikaze which are bigger and these guys have four torpedo tubes these are actually great i, I actually really like this uh, design um not not very small guns but has four torpedo tubes they're all above the water that allows us to fire three shots of torpedoes and torpedoes are going to be very effective in our surprise attack which we'll get to finally we have a smaller vessel being built by great britain uh, and that is the yashima class less armor uh 412 inch torpedo tubes 16 knots i'm sorry i'm not i can't build a vessel with 16 knots i am going to scrap that um it it's going to be done 10 months, but it's just not worth it. It can't keep up. Um, so that's going to give us back that monthly balance here. Uh, we have coastal batteries. Uh, we have the area overview. Uh, so what we have tonnage, strength wise, base overview. Nothing too important right now. Uh, over here, we have prestige. Prestige gives us bonuses and, and uh, uh, makes us look better on the world stage, I can think. Tonnage on forest stations. So if we had colonies that are further afar, uh, for example, we have our heavy cruisers currently in Southeast Asia. Um, that, and it's costing us a pretty penny at that. Uh, it's in Southeast Asia and it's doing foreign tonnage services there. So that's just to ensure that the colonies are doing okay. So it's stationed at Taiwan. We have some of the rest. Uh, treaties, you can have treaties, uh, specifically uh, naval arms treaties, so you'll be limited to certain armaments or certain things, and that's a really interesting part of the game. Then we have peace treaty, invasion range, that's all good. Our yearly budget, our monthly budget, maintenance, construction, naval aircraft, research, we'll get to research in a second, some enhanced training, intelligence, total expenses, and, and the like. So, uh, first thing I'm going to do, is you'll notice the status set. These mean active service. So this is what you would do for war type, and that affects crew quality. I'm going to take all of these and I'm putting them into mothball because we need the money. I'm also going to put you. Yeah, we can't put you into a mothball because you're in uh Southeast Asia, but that's fine because you're you're basically a battleship, a fast battleship. Um, I'm gonna put you into reserve because we do want to keep our battleships available. You need to come back there because you're costing us 334. So what we're going to do is going to right click. A lot of this stuff's right click. Um, and then you can select the tab. We're going to move ship and we're going to move you to Northeast Asia. There we go. I also want to make sure my preferences are okay. Yeah, preferences. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Um, we're not going to design anything just yet. We might design a light cruiser. We'll, we'll see. Uh, research though. So this is the research. We have naval guns. 
We can go up to 20 inch guns. Those are the largest naval guns you can build. You also have quality. So certain nations and as you develop will get better quality guns. In this case, I'm going to increase our naval budget to 12%. That does give some diminishing returns, but it's going to improve our research. This shows our bonuses. I First thing I'm going to do, high in naval guns because we're behind in that and we need to get better naval guns. Uh, the next thing that I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to go for uh, light forces and torpedo warfare high. Um, I don't really care about explosive shells. Basically, it's just a priority. So you want lows to have highs, essentially. And this shows the levels in them. Um, subdivision fire control. Fire control is going to be very important. Um, fire control is going to be very important. Well, we don't need to care about submarines for now. Um, so we're not going to develop in there. Low. Torpedo technology, high though. We need good torpedo technology. Um, subdivision, low. Um, and we'll go for that for now. Go go for that. So that, that's going to cost us a bit more. 474. If we compare that to what we were spending. 316. So we are increasing that. But it's worth the research. Uh, we want to increase that research. We have doctrine. Um, so... Uh, surprise attacks will take place at night, and that's what Japan's known for. So we might want to go into training priority. This will cost us money, though. And we can also change ship loadouts in terms of their armament. In this case, um, I am going to... Yeah, that will cost us 79. But I'm going to do it because I want to ensure that we are good at those surprise attacks. That's going to cost us, but I think it's worth it. We're going to go for the night fighting training. Um, then we got fleet exercises. We won't worry about that. We got build fortifications, mobilization, which was mobilized and all reserved as needed. Um, you, I'm going to put you on foreign station. And then we need to start building some battles. So I want to get some battleships building because we're going to need them if we're going to actually be able to counter the Russian Navy. And we can see what the Russian Navy. Uh, what the enemy navies have. So Germany has a cruiser, heavy cruiser here. Russia doesn't have anything. Uh, but they have a advantage on us. Five battleships. We need to equalize that advantage. And we've just cancelled the battleship. So we can begin building the Fuso class. And honestly speaking, I'm probably going to keep that. Great Britain's the one who built it because it's got the 12-inch guns. I'm okay with that. We're going to order one to be built. That'll take us 25 months. Um, and that'll give us four 12-inch guns. I'm okay with with that with that uh, decision. I'm going to also mm, we can't afford that. We're gonna we're gonna want to be able to afford dock size because that's another problem for us. Um, but I'm gonna order up. We build some to build some extra destroyers. I really would like to build some extra destroyers. I think we'll wait. We'll wait for now. Uh, we can't build anything, and I want to get that sorted out. So we're going to, yeah, we're building the Fuji. And by the way, if you guys want names in this in this uh, game, uh, put your put in the description what if you want to have a name and suggest a name for a battleship or a cruiser or, or, or a light cruiser or whatever, um, and hope maybe you'll see some action. So let's go for the next turn. We've done 18 minutes and we haven't gone into a uh, in, into a turn. Let's try and get to the end of the year at least in this episode. So there we go. We just got a message that they built they're building a cruiser now. So you can see all the crew quality is going down. And then I'm going to put this into reserve. So that's going to save us a lot of money there, um, which is really, really useful. Again, I want to get that building on those larger docks. Looks like we have tonnage on foreign stations causing us some problems. Can I put this into mothball? I can, and that saves us a lot of money. So I'm actually going to send uh, these into a foreign station. And that'll send them over. Um, so we'll send, send those. But we need light cruisers, really. I need 24 on that. Okay, here we go. There's been upheaval in Sumatra, so that's uh, in the Indonesian area. And they, they'll send events like this. If we send an expedition for us to restore order, there's a chance that we can take over the colony. Yes, we should. And looks like we actually lost prestige for that. That's unfortunate. Uh, I'm going to start building some bigger docks. Oh, we're going to have to wait again. That's a, that's a fumble on my part. Um, let's just end term. Uh, in Great Britain. Yes, cooperation will benefit us both. We want to keep Rainbow and happy with us. And in fact, if I can get a, a naval treaty with them, that would be fantastic, like a, a alliance. Because they are the, obviously, the predominant naval power. Look at the naval budget differences. 
we have a budget comparable to Italy. Uh, that's the situation for us. Okay, now I'm going to build um, some destroyers. I'm going to build three more destroyers. And I want to get our destroyers on parity with Russia and Germany. And then I also want to get light cruisers building when possible. Um, but yeah. We got a blueprint for the German cruiser, heavy cruiser, the Freya. Um, it's a light battleship, bad deck armor, so one and a, one and a half inch. Lightly armed, pretty lightly armored, but it's got four eight inch guns. It goes 21 knots. I'm okay with that. Our, cru our heavy cruiser is better. That's not a problem. And uh, Great Britain's even increased their naval uh, spending even more. Uh, and the USA has also done so. Uh, we really need an event so we can get more. Uh, six inch guns, we just can't afford that. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna go for we can't afford. We're gonna oh USA is getting high there. Got to be a bit careful of that. Now do we? Uh, Great Britain lay down another vessel. We have twenty four thousand funds. We're gonna be build, we're building a dockyard obviously there. Um, I'm going to build go a little bit into negative. But I'm gonna build two more destroyers. Okay, revolution in China. We're going to send a strong squadron. Let's intervene in China because that's never gone wrong for Japan. There we go. And that's increased our budget by a little bit, which is nice to see. Uh, though it has increased tension amounts. Oh, that's not good. That's really not good. Um, we need we need to be good relations. Uh, you call this tensions low? <sighs> we just lost all of our extra budget we gained. <laughs> well, that's a problem. Um, one of our minor engines back our ally unconditionally. Yeah, because ten higher tension means higher budget. That's basically the game. We want to skirt that and get as much budget as we can. Wow, that's fantastic. We we're getting better torpedo technology. New training applied. Crews are now deemed proficient in tactics, and our spy got us uh, improved six inch naval gun, which is uh, fantastic. A rebellion broke out. So. There can be rebellions, and you can support those rebellions of your enemy. And they can then uh, rebel, essentially, and uh, turn the territory neutral. So if we have a look, I believe Fiji... Where is Fiji? Fiji should be somewhere over here, right? Yeah, Fiji's here, so there's a rebellion over here. And the UK has a, only a light cruiser uh, stationed. Three destroyers are commissioned into the Navy. One of our cruisers has run aground on the shore of a minor nation. We're performing an illicit uh, intelligence operation. Demand that they release the ship. Let us examine the ship, even if it risks exposing. No, we can't have them exposed. Okay, what messages did we get? Rumors of tech. Hydraulic recoil. Russia has commissioned their heavy cruiser. We suffer from cramp. Oh, yes, because they're, they're using cramped conditions, aren't they? That's a problem. I need... I need... Uh... Yeah, I need that. We're going to put these into reserve, by the way. I need a light cruiser. That's what I need. So we're going to design the vessel. I'm going to go for light cruiser. Now, what I do is I, I hit auto design and then I change the aspects just because I'm not exactly sure how to start from scratch. Again, someone can, can, can directly inform me, but we're going to also design. This is what the computer thinks. Let's go for a 5,000 ton vessel. Um, And again, you wouldn't have seen this one, though. We did get those improved six inch guns, right? Yeah, we did. Um, so we can go for six inches. 22 knots is okay. Um, I want them to be able to get away. Like, yeah, 22, we'll go for 22 knots. I think that's as acceptable. Two inch deck armor minimum. These guns are pretty big, so we're gonna clear the turrets. Yeah, clear the turrets out. Then I'm gonna add in port aft. And then port wing, starboard wing, port aft, starboard aft, single turrets. Cannot combine our, I see, we'll clear the turrets then. Well, port, forward. Ah, they don't like that, do they? That's fine then. We'll have to go for forward, then starboard, port wing, aft, aft. Whoa, what the hell's going on with that? Um... E, F, S, T. Delete that to it. Add in port wing. Yeah, that is the port wing. I want to add to the port forward wing. There we go. So that gives us six six-inch guns with a weight of six. 
these are pretty good. We've got no secondaries, but that'll give us a broadside of four on each. Um, decent capability. We've got two torpedo tubes, 22 knots. This is okay for a 5,000 ton. That's going to cost us 1,000 to build at once. We're going to go for that. We're going to save that design. This will be the Yayama class. We're going to take two months to do that. Now, I'm going to put a budget in red momentarily. But um, we're going to get that design speed done. So, that'll take a little bit of time. Accuracy. We should ship. No, we should let them handle their own troubles. We're not going to start a war with the UK. That is a suicidal idea. <laughs> a very, very suicidal idea. Uh, we're going to increase our dock size next. There we go. And we're ready for construction. Well, I ideally would want a n one of them, but we're going to go for building that. Uh, once those are done, we can look at building a light cruiser. Two more destroyers into the Navy. Yes, we should convince the Prime Minister to increase naval expenditure. Yes, that would be very useful. There we go. Our naval budget has increased, actually. And then we can, uh, we can grab ourselves the light cruiser. And we'll need that for the foreign station situation because that is kind of a problem at the moment. Uh, oh, I also didn't put these in mothball. Mothball, please. Give us more money. And we're going to continue to build those dockyards up. We're getting a lot of attention. Good quality stuffers. Uh, the Prime Minister wants to hold an international naval gathering with a sailing regatta and competition. This will strengthen our international standing and lessen tensions, but the money to finance the event will be taken out. Yes, I think that's a good idea. Uh, we got hydraulic recoil. We got better torpedoes, which is really, really great. The rebellion in Fiji continues. There we go. Tensions reducing a little bit. And if we buy, and really interesting, if if we get more tensions with like the UK, we can't use the Suez Canal, um, and we can't build from them. This is, goes with the same for, for any nation. So that's that's one of the one of the things. That's fine. It's very minor. A colonial crisis in the USA has risen. What's your advice? We must safeguard our interests, and if it leads to war, we are prepared to fight it. Best of all, you prepare for future conflict. I don't want to increase the tension too, too much. Let's just go for a budget increase. Rebellion in Fiji continue. Yeah. 60,000 now. Let's have a look at our enemies. Um, so we have Russia. They have five battleships right now we're building one of ours they have 90,000 tons but obviously they can't a lot of that's in the uh, northern europe so not too concerning germany building two we need to start building more battleships um so if we can get a little bit more budget increase i'm going to start just continually building two battleships at a time light cruisers we're trying to get another one of those so we should have more light cruisers and uh seven inch guns that's fine by me uh building that dockyard up one of our agents has been seen to be caught in Russia. Make the agent a national hero. There we go. And we'll have that battleship done sharply in seven turns. The ambassador from Russia has approached uh, the Minister of the Navy with a station that we curb our program. How about they go away and we go to war? 600 tons uh, vessel that. Well, we can build 600 ton destroyers. Which is obviously pretty nice. Um, but the main focus right now for me is going to be on getting battleships. But we might have to halt the light cruiser. We'll see. I, w I do want to design a new battleship. Um, if possible. Um, what to then replace the, the Fuso uh, class. Because we're, we're building a Fuso. Uh, handle it quietly and discreetly. I don't want to start a war with the US. I'd much rather start a war with Russia. That I know I can win. Then I start a war with the US, which I probably would stalemate or lose. Um, so we're gonna go for another increment here. There we go. And let's design a let's design a battleship because we're gonna need one. I'm gonna go so local yard. We can build a Great Britain, but obviously there is a concern that if we build a Great Britain, you know, it can cause us some problems. I think we're gonna be forced to. We can build in France. Um Obviously, France has not as good capabilities, um, but France is currently low tension with us, and so I'm okay with that. Yeah, we can do 12 inch guns. 12 inch guns are kind of the norm. I'm going to try and, we're going to go for a 
Let's go for 15,000 ton vessel. It's a little bit bigger. 20 knots. Oh, that's big. Let's go for 19 knots for this. So we can have gun data over here, and this will tell us um, this will tell us essentially what we have immunity from. So for for example, we have a 7.5 inch belt and a 2 inch deck. Against 12 inch guns, which are the guns we have we are capable of deflecting its fire uh, at 6,000 yards. I would like to see that increased. So I'm going to go for not that. Let's go for, and we also got to keep in mind that these battleships will be around for, you know, 10 years. Nine inch belt seems like the best option here. Yeah. Nine inch belt against 12 inch guns, which are the common guns currently being used. Um, then I want to go for, uh, secondaries i don't see the need for the seven inches we'll go for 14 these are in uh casemates they're like in mounted in the hull if you don't know uh three inch guns i'm not too bothered about uh like i don't really want the, the those um we can have the torpedoes that's fine again i'd really like to get the belt up if we could 10 inch belt 14 guns. Let's keep a 9 inch belt and we'll just go for additional secondary weapons. Yeah, 18, 18, 6 inch. Deck arm is okay. Conning towers, eh. Turret's fine. Secondary's okay. That's, that's all fine. We don't need a turret top of that much. We can go for that and then we can just. Hmm. We'll leave 54. And I'll uh, just put the turrets up to. Let's do a 9 inch turret. Let's. 9 inch on the conning tower. Uh, 5 inch on the secondaries. No, 4 inch on the secondaries. And we'll just increase secondary armament. Looks good to me. And this is just how you check if the vessel is actually like capable of, of being designed the way it should be. 2.5 inch deck armor might be a good idea. But I think 2 inch is fine for now. I would again like to get up to like a 10 inch belt. I know it's a... Yeah... I mean, this cost is a little terrifying to me, though. No, 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 this is okay. I'm looking at incidental cost. Time, monthly cost, 1800. That's okay by me. Nine inch belt. I mean, how much of an improvement is this? Is this the Iki class? So if we, if we look at the Fuso, right? So the Fuso, we have a look at both designs here. The Fuso has a uh, nine inch belt armor, two inch deck, eight inch on the turrets. So we got better turret armor, li lightly worse conning tower, worse battery armor. Uh, but we're a little bit faster. Uh, 19 knots. Um, we might want to drop down on that. No, well, let's go for 19. I'm going to go for 10 inch deck uh, belt armor. 10 inch belt. Lower a few of these guns. We're going to lower this to 12. And I'm going to increase the belt again to... To 12 inch 11 inch belt let's go for an 11 inch belt let's buff up the deck armor oh i can't buff up the deck armor can we the extended belt i'm not too worried about move that back down let's go for deck armor 2.5 inch on the deck and then we can increase or increase this to 14 i'm okay with this vessel it's not great it's a pre not it's gonna have its issues but It'll do its job, and that's and that's really what matters to me. So we'll get that design solution for the Iki class, um, and we'll get that on the way. Uh, we have changed blueprints for the German battleship Mecklenburg. So that has a one and a half inch deck, so bad. Four nine nine inch guns on a battleship. Yeah, that's not great. That it's secondaries though. It has 18 seven, seven inch guns. This is more like a heavy cruiser, not a battleship. Um not heavy cruiser, uh, armored cruiser. Uh, let's increment along again. Heavy secondary battery, that's really nice. We got 11 inch guns research, so we can domestically build those. Um, and let's go to finish up when our battleship finishes. Or disease, that's not great. Uh, Borneo, think force that ostensibly. We should push for international force. They recall the expedition, fantastic. So they lose some prestige for that, uh, which is uh, good to know. Though, again, we're having uh, some, some problems there. Um, wait, not now. We're gonna, we're gonna wait for that to be done, uh, before we start construction on the battleship. 
the Fuji is commissioned into the Navy. Uh, this is the Imperator Pavel, which is what we'll probably be facing. A pretty normal vessel for early game and decent, bigger than our ships. Um, so definitely something we're going to have to worry about. Uh, okay, we're going to put you into reserve. Um, I want this vessel, but also I want to start construction on two battleships if I can. And I'm going to go for the Iki class two battleships on the way. So that'll be. France will be building those for us, the Sagami and the Iki. If we get a little bit more budget, we can restart production on the Black Cruiser. We are holding that there. Um, but yeah, I think that's where I'm going to leave the episode off. We've got high tensions. We're probably going to get into a, a war next uh, next uh, episode. But I hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, please do like, comment, share. really does help me out. And we'll be doing these uh, episodes every other day. Um, so every other day that... Uh, so we'll do... This episode, then a roar will be tomorrow, and then another episode after that. All right, then. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. And special thanks to members in Passive 9001, Scott Mundy, Tiki832, Ryan Smelly, It's Honey, Zaven, Death Himself, Cliffess, Alex Roberts, Fishik, Gravmania, Lewis Neto, and King Stroza. Thank you for your support.